Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we have the Corvette behind us. We're kind of doing a more, kind of a more formal sit down, if that's a proper term. I don't know. But anyway, uh, now that we've got this welding table, I've got some chairs, you know, I think we can kind of interact a little bit better instead of me just kind of standing in front of the camera and, you know, not knowing what to do with my hands, <laughs> you know, to quote Talladega Nights. But hey, Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was that new TBS 2650. Now this supercharger has been out for a couple years. I know Harrop has a kit, Boost District has a kit, Kong Performance just came out with their Game Changer LSA, LS9 kit. And I kind of wanted to go over each one of those setups and see if it would be worth it to buy one of those kits for my car. Now. I'm going to give you guys some numbers. I've crunched uh, basically based off my dyno experience. I had the same cylinder heads the entire time. They're just GM performance parts, LS3 heads. They're CNC ported. Uh, same valve springs. Those are comp cams. Uh, 918 springs, I think. Comp cam springs. The GM performance heads. Uh, we've had fuel injector. Yeah, FIC. 1000s. I believe they're 95 pounds an hour. Same Cook's inch and seven eighth headers and all that good stuff. But the thing we have changed over the last couple of years are pulley sizes. And I want to kind of give you this information to lead into the 2650 discussion. So when I first put the car together with just the blower, oh, and an LS9 camshaft. So we don't have the most spec'd out camshaft out there, but it's pretty mild for what it is. So let's go over my results that we've had. You know, when I first put the car together, we had the 3.25 inch pulley that's making around 8.5 psi of boost, so 8 to 9 pounds of boost. We had 580 rear wheel horsepower. The next setup we had was a 3 inch pulley making 10 psi, and that made 601 horsepower on pump gas, on 93 pump gas. Now, that same setup, we did add a flex fuel sensor and we added E85 to the car. So that put the output out to 650 rear wheel horsepower. So 580 to 601 to 650, going from 3.25 to three inch pulley. Now the new setup that we have is the 2.75 inch pulley. It should be good for around 11.5 to 12 pounds of boost. Unfortunately, I don't have a dyno number. This is when the car failed. Now we've talked about my performance numbers, but let's talk about the 2650 numbers. All right. I've already seen the RPM videos. I've seen other people dynos videos. I've seen Harrop's videos. Basically with a 400 plus cubic inch motor, whether it's a 416 or a 427, you know, these cars are making, they can make well over a thousand horsepower, up to like 1100 horsepower. I think Harrop even did a 102 throttle body and big pulley LSA setup for the pulley drive system. I think they made like 1200 horsepower or something like that. And RPM's most recent video, they were just at just over a thousand. I think it was like, like 1020, something like that. So these are big superchargers for big motors. Now, would I benefit from this at all? You know, that's hard to say because, you know, I'm only pushing say 11 or 12 PSI, but here's where the efficiency comes into place. And this is why the 2650 is making huge numbers. So at 14 PSI, this is the advertisement from Eaton, at 14 PSI, the 2650 is 25% more efficient than a 2300. And even you know, RPM's dyno videos, those guys were picking up 150 wheel horsepower just by switching blowers. And yes, they changed the upper pulley size a little bit. I think they went from a really small LSA pulley to like a three inch you know, 2650 pulley. So there is a little bit of gaming there, but you know, with a similar pulley, I don't think they did a PSI to PSI because I think that would be hard to fine tune, but you know, they gained 150 wheel horsepower over a max effort LSA. So let's talk about my little 364 cubic inch LS2. Yes, I've got heads, cam and all that, but the short block is all LS2. And you know, at 10 PSI, I had 601 horsepower. Now let's reduce that to 600 just for easy calculation. And if we take Eaton's claim of 25%, let's just call it 20, because I know we won't see as much gains as a bigger 
cubic inch engine. So let's just call it 20%. So 20% of 600 horsepower is 120. So 120 plus 600, 720 horsepower. That's kind of in line with what RPM saw with their 416 gaining 150 wheel horsepower. You know, it's just it's just that efficiency that they're picking up. And uh, you know, the problem with these E-forces, they overheat, they're not very efficient, and the, the log runners, Basically, they just get real hot, and I've done as much as I can short of adding methanol to the car. You know, I've added cooling, the bigger heat exchanger, I've added a ice tank, I've added E85. The only two things you could do would be an inner chiller, which is way too much money, and a methanol kit, which could be done for probably around, say, $600 to $1,000 with a retune. So that's my estimate of horsepower. You know, take it with a grain of salt. These are all hypothetical numbers, but you know, I'm just kind of basing my information with what I've seen with my dyno experience in the past. Obviously, everything will vary. But now that we've gone over the horsepower numbers, let's get into the financial numbers and see if this makes sense. So if I was to swap over to the LS9 Kong Performance LS9 2650, the cost of the blower itself is $6,600. A LS9 lid, assuming I bought a new one for, from GM, is $2,100. So that puts me around $8,700 for just the blower and the lid. Now Greg also sells a CNC ported lid. I don't have a price on it yet, but that's got it's a billet piece of aluminum. I think it's got to be at least $2,000. So either way, you're looking at almost nine grand in just the cost of the blower and the, the, the lid. And then for my car, it's LS2. This, the setup is the same for the LS3. The only car you might get away with it is the LS3 dry sump. But I even think the LS3 dry sump is different from the LS9 because the accessory drive is all different. And I think even the crank pulley is physically a different length coming out of the lower end of the block. I forgot about that. The LS9 accessory drive system is $2,000. This is price from Jake's today. Also, the LS9 water pump, which does not come with the LS9 accessory drive, you think it would, it's another $600. So with the $2,600 of the accessory drive and the supercharger cost, you're gonna be at $11,300. That's 11 grand just for a blower. And that doesn't cost any of the other accessories. You know, wiring, you're gonna, you're gonna have to rewire the whole car basically. Uh, any of the coolant system, whether it's the radiator setup, whether it's the blower cooler setup, air conditioning lines, I mean, that's probably gonna be another, let's just say $2,000 at minimum. You're looking at almost $15,000. And that doesn't even get to the crankshaft, which is totally different. The crankshaft, the oil pan, and the front timing chain cover is all unique to the LS9. You're looking at, I mean, rebuilding a motor, you're you're looking at nearly $20,000 at least. So it'd probably be better for you just to buy a crate engine, but then, you know, I don't know what an LS9 crate engine is going for nowadays. I think it was like 26 grand, 20, 22 to $23,000. So just just crazy to set, try a LS9 setup. Now you could also try the LSA setup. Now that setup is $5,500, so $5,500 for just the blower. You'd have to take Greg's pulley setup off, swap it over to Jesse Olson. Olson Custom Works makes a LSA to LS3 swap kit. You could do that, or you could cut the car up, move the steering rack and all kinds of crazy stuff, and try to get that third row, the three accessory drive pulley to work, you know, the harmonic balance to work on a Corvette. Um, you know, so maybe if you got the Olsen Custom Works pulley and Greg's blower, you would be at roughly $6,000. Then you'd either have to find a LSA uh, ZL1 or CTS V lid, and those are, I think, between $300 and $600. So you could try the LSA setup, and that would be seven grand. But like I was saying, guys, like you have to cut a hole in the hood. I believe you have to cut a hole in the cowl. Hey, you have to butcher the car. I don't want to say that out loud, but you pretty much butcher the car to get that setup to work. So, you know, figure seven, eight grand there. And that's not including any of the cooling accessory, any of that stuff. I've already got all that stuff in the car, so it'd be a little bit cheaper, but still 
say eight grand for an LSA setup. So eight grand and 20 grand is, I think is our total so far. And now we get to the aftermarket. Now there's two companies, there's Harrop and there's Boost District. Harrop, I've been in contact with, I've gotten some price numbers from them. Their kit for an LS3 Chevy SS, which is the same accessory drive as a C6 Corvette, their kit is $7,995. So basically eight grand. That comes with everything for a Commodore or Chevy SS. Won't necessarily work in the Corvette. You might be able to work, make it work. But I don't know if they have a bare bones version. I, I'm still in contact with them. So maybe they have a bare bones version. It's cheaper than that. But your eight grand for a whole kit, that includes like a tensioner, the pulley, the idler bracket, all that stuff. And it's kind of based on the LSA, but it's designed to fit standard LS3 water pump, standard LS3 crank pulley. You don't have to swap any of the LSA stuff. So that's eight grand. And then modification, like I was saying. Then there's Boost District who sells just the blower. I think he might, I'm not sure what all comes with that kit. I think it's just a supercharger and maybe the mounting plate and the lower manifold that blo that bolts to the cylinder head. That kit is $6,325. So I think his kit would physically bolt to the motor and sit in the car, but I think it would be way too tall for a stock hood. And even with my modified setup, I have the ZL1 hood, I have the Hinton Motorsports lowering engine mounts, and then I have the subframe spacers that's from Lingenfelser that spaces everything down even more. I don't think it would fit. So those are the financial numbers we have for each kit, and uh, you know, depending on how they'd fit or whatnot. But let's go ahead and review the hair kit. Now let's show you a little mock-up that we've done. As you guys can see, we have a CAD design here. What this is, is obviously cardboard-aided design. But Harrop actually publishes their outline numbers for the dimensions of their supercharger kit. So as you guys can see, the height is roughly nine and an eighth, and I made just taped in the other box to the front on here just to kind of indicate how the snout would go. And obviously we're a little short with the pulley setup, but I just wanted to do a very basic mock-up to see if the Harrop kit would even fit. Now, as you guys can see, it does actually physically fit. We actually have more room in the back than we did with the E-Force. However, the problem is my mock-up hits right at the front of the hood. Now, the only spot we've had trouble is actually with the very front of the mock-up box. And that's basically because I kept the design of the mock-up to be as big as it can be. When in truth, the Harrop blower actually angles down quite a bit. So probably here it angles down and then you've got the pulley. So does it fit? You know, to be honest, I'm just not sure. Like we're super close, but I just, I just can't guarantee that it would fit. But I will say this, it's actually not far from fitting like how the Edelbrock sits. Obviously the blower snout and all that's a little bit taller than the E-Force over here, but I think we could get it to work. So could there be a 2650 in the future with this car? Maybe, I'm just not sure at this point. So we're gonna close this video here. I apologize if I've talked too long, I have a bad habit of doing that. But I wanted to give you guys as much information as I could that I found and based off my experience, what I found on the good old internet and uh, just go from there. So we've talked about the horsepower, we've talked about the cost of the kit, we've talked about the kit physically fitting the car, and we've talked about the efficiency of the blower just a little bit. We'll expand on that in the closing. And the closing is gonna be, is this kit worth it? You know, it, there's a lot of factors here, cost-wise. LSA, LS9, no way, it's simply way too expensive. Boost District, I'm gonna say no, just due to the fact you have to fabricate, come up with the rest of the kit yourself. And the hair kit, if they have a bare bones kit, it's not the full SS kit or the, the Commodore kit. If they have a cheaper kit, I would say yeah, if you can get that kit without the heat exchanger, without the pump, without the little plastic reservoir, any of that stuff. If they have a kit for say around $5,000, you know, I'm just saying ballpark, I think it would be worth it. Because I could probably sell that $2,300 for at least two or $3,000 and, you know, offset that off the cost of the $2,650, upgrade the $2,650 for three grand. Yeah, that, I mean, I would do that personally. Now, we're going to talk about efficiency. 
The problem with this blower is, can you slow it down enough to work on a stock bottom end LS3 or LS2? That, I just don't know. I don't know if they physically make pulleys big enough to limit the horsepower to like 11 to 12 PSI. You know, I saw with the three inch pulley that RPM ran on the Kong blower, that thing made over a thousand horsepower. And I think it was pushing 20 PSI or 21 pounds of boost, something like that. So I'm like, geez, you know, I don't know if they physically make a pulley big enough to slow it down. Would you want to slow it down? I don't know. You know, the efficiency, you know, if you slow down the blower, you're making more power with less boost. That's less shock on the drivetrain, less punishment on the drivetrain. And also, you're going to be physically spinning that blower slower than over spinning a 2300 at the same PSI level. Another thing to consider. And then, how long will the stock bottom end work live? I don't know guys. And then I think the last thing to consider is will the blower physically fit the car? We've talked about it. We mocked up the hair up kit. You know, I really don't want to cut up that ZR1 hood. However, I do have my stock hood behind you off camera. I've been trying to sell that stupid hood for two years for like 400 bucks. No one wants to buy it. So I'm like, I wouldn't be against cutting a hole in that hood and have a blower sticking through it. So that'd be kind of cool. But I don't know, I would rather keep the ZR1 hood with the ventilation and all that good stuff. So, so I guess my final point would be, is it worth it? I'm gonna have to say maybe. I know that's kind of an indecisive answer, but we've just got way too many things to consider. We've got the cost, we've got the, the hitting the hood, we've got the pulley combo and how long will the motor live. I think for me, the biggest issue right there is the cost. If I can get a good deal from Herrick, maybe we'll see a kid on the future. I don't know, you know, but for you guys to check that out, you guys are going to have to hit that subscribe button and also turn your bell notifications on because then you'll know if we've upgraded the supercharger or not. But beyond that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know we went a little bit long. I apologize, but you know, we had a lot of this stuff to go over. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you guys want to help support the channel, go to all the links down below and make sure you check out bonecrusherss.com. That's our merchandise store that helps support the channel, projects, videos, and all that stuff. And heck, maybe they even help go support buying a 2650 for this car. But that will be for a future video. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.